Hi, and welcome to an overview of G-Ranges. In this and the following videos, we are going to discuss G-Ranges, which is a data structure for storing genomic intervals in R. The key thing about G-Ranges is that they are fast and efficient, and I think it's fair to say they have completely transformed my own work. This is data structures that I use almost every day I work with genomic data. In my opinion, every R user dealing with genomic data needs to master these uh, data structures and the functionality provided uh, by these data structures in order to facilitate their own work. So the key insight is that many integers in genomics can be thought of as intervals or perhaps sets of intervals of integers. So here's a screenshot from the UCSC genome browser. It's a somewhat randomly chosen gene and we can see there are genes which are intervals. They are DNA's clusters, there are SNPs, there are repeat masked regions of the genome, and basically many, many, many integers in genomics can be thought of as intervals. Promoters, genes, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are really intervals but consist of only a single base, CBG islands, but also data such as next generation sequencing reads after they've been mapped, once a read has been mapped to the genome, it's an interval. Or sequence data that has been processed in some form, perhaps you have done a chip seek experiment and you have done peak calling and you end up with peaks that are often described as intervals with some score associated to them. Because many objects uh, can be thought of as intervals, many tasks in genomics involve relating sets of intervals to each other. For example, questions such as, which promoters contain a SNP? Which transcription factor binding sites overlap a promoter? Which genes are covered by sequencing reads? These are all uh, tasks that we uh, do again and again. And conceptually, it's about relating different sets of intervals to each other. And this is the kind of functionality that's provided by the framework we're discussing here. So here's a little uh, visual depiction of some R output of a G ranges. A G ranges, as you can see here, consists of three, this particular G range consists of three genomic intervals. Uh, the three intervals are all on chromosome one. They have a strand associated with them, which in, in this case is plus, minus, and plus. And they have some ranges. The first interval goes, contains the bases one, two, and three and the second one contains three, four, and five. The G ranges has names associated with it. In this particular instance, that's optional. The names here are A1, A2, and A3. And there's also uh, some information about the genome, uh, which is not very helpful in this case here. In this case, the software has inferred that there's a single uh, chromosome, and it doesn't know how long the chromosome is, but usually, when we work with human data, we know exactly how long the different chromosomes are, and many people like to store this information in the uh, object as well. So G ranges uh, uh, are defined, and the functionality is provided by two fairly complicated packages called genomic ranges and another package called I ranges. As I said before, these packages are fast and efficient, but to a first glance, they can appear very complicated with many different classes and a lot of different functions. And what we're going to try to do in the following videos is simplify it a little bit to make it um, easier to process. G ranges or genomic ranges as a software package is described in this uh, excellent paper from Michael Lawrence and, and other authors in PLOS Computation Biology. And what we are doing, or this concept of computing on intervals, is uh, something that is a functionality that's also provided by a command line tool called BetTools, which is an excellent tool. Uh, it's not really something we're going to discuss in this series of lectures.